In Game 6 of the 2021 Western Conference Finals between the Phoenix Suns and Los Angeles Clippers, Chris Paul drained this three to extend the Suns' already massive fourth quarter lead. The Clippers called timeout, and as Paul headed back to the bench, he made eye contact with Patrick Beverly. If he could levitate, I'm sure he would have gladly floated to his sideline. But since walking on two feet is the standard here, looking at someone during a stroll is pretty normal. Except, Pat Bev reacted by shoving Paul in the back, sending him to the floor. That put this beef on our radar. A quick glance shouldn't warrant that type of reaction. I mean, keep in mind there have been no real rumblings of beef up to that point. But understanding who these dudes are helps that moment and everything that comes after it make a bit more sense. Chris Paul is widely regarded as one of the greatest point guards ever. The future first ballot Hall of Famer is a masterful floor general, known for filthy handles and an ability to knock down shots anywhere on the floor. Off the court, he's gained the respect of his peers, serving as president of the NBA Players Association. And if you don't know him from hoops, you've surely seen his twin brother Cliff slanging State Farm Insurance on TV. CP3 is one of the league's brightest stars and most marketable players. The one thing currently missing from his impressive resume is an NBA title. In his pursuit of a championship, Paul plays with questionable intensity, gaining enemies along the way while earning the rep as a pest. Every aspect of Paul's career caught Patrick Beverly's eye. Beverly is an inspiration in his own way. After being drafted and cut soon after in 2010, Pat Bev spent years sharpening his skills in hostile environments across Europe, before carving out his place in the NBA as one of the league's peskiest defenders. Beverly's journey to the pros helped define him. He operates with unmatched aggression, barking and hounding opponents the length of the floor, which has maybe led to some dirty plays. The most infamous showcase of his antics came during his first year in the NBA when he dove at Russell Westbrook's legs while going for a steal. So yeah, Bev came out the gate hot. But despite sharing a conference with CP3 from 2013 through 2020, everything seemed gravy between Beverly and Paul. That changed in 2021. Bev a Clipper, Paul a son, the pair found themselves in a battle out west with an optimal opportunity for drama as the playoffs loomed. While chippiness existed between these teams, CP3 and Beverly found themselves at the center of it in the fourth quarter of a game in April 2021. As Paul brought the ball up the court, Bev caught him with a vicious elbow to the ribs in midair. After review, the foul was deemed excessive, leading to an ejection for Bev which left him completely shocked as if he didn't just gut check Paul moments earlier. That blow from Bev only acted as a teaser for what came next when the teams later faced off in the Western Conference Finals. CP3 entered the NBA's health and safety protocols, forcing him to miss two games and leaving Beverly to focus on Devin Booker. That left Book needing stitches. But once Paul returned, Beverly locked in on his main target. Besides slapping the ball out of Paul's hands in front of a ref and picking up a tech during a Game 4 loss, Pat Bev showed his clear feelings about the point guard in Game 5. As Phoenix trailed by 9 in the middle of the third quarter, Beverly fought through a screen and collided with CP3 as he went up for a jumper. With Paul laid out on the court in pain, Beverly mocked him with a devilish grin insisting he flopped. Just listen to the crowd rain down boos on Beverly, who couldn't care less. He fed off that type of hate. Ultimately, the call got upgraded to a flagrant, and just before Paul stepped to the free throw line, Beverly walked up to CP3 and congratulated him on selling the call. LA went on to win game five to avoid elimination, and when questioned about the fall and whether he would be okay, Paul didn't address Beverly, flatly saying he'll be fine. Oh uh, yeah, I'll be all right. Sheesh. That awkward silence as reporters waited for CP3 to expand is telling. Anyway, 
During Game 6, Paul lit up Bev and the Clippers en route to making his first ever NBA Finals. But it didn't come without drama. The shove from Beverly is one thing, but the way Paul reacted in the moment and after the game laid an interesting foundation for this beat. Following the shot in the back from Bev, instead of popping up and attempting to get his lick back, once Paul got to his feet, he could be seen pumping his arms in celebration. After the game, he kept that same energy. When asked about the shove, Paul once again didn't address Beverly directly and jokingly said the hit stung. He then went on to say how he's matured over the years and instead of chirping back at people, he's learned to let his game do the talking. Pat Bev, on the other hand, addressed his actions head on the next day in typical Pat Bev fashion. He tagged CP3 in a tweet acknowledging that his emotions got the best of him. It's a stand-up move from Bev, but he also mentioned the shove wasn't intended for Chris, even though that's exactly who he forcefully sent to the ground. A few days later, the NBA hit Pat Bev with a suspension, and when reporters brought it up to Paul, he just wanted to focus on the finals. Time after time, Paul was given the chance to fire back at Beverly, but he kept it pushing. Sure, Paul can credit his maturation, but his actions seemed intentional. In the past, Paul had no issues defending himself during times of beef where he saw his competition on a level footing. With Bev, CP3 sidestepped every opportunity to even mention his name. Or maybe Paul knew response would play right into Bev's hand. You can't win a back and forth with someone who thrives off negativity. Unfortunately for Paul, while he tried to center his attention toward adding that finals trophy that saluted him, the Suns fell to the Milwaukee Bucks in six games. While the smoke cleared, it appeared the feud had died down the following season. Pat Bev had been traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves, and when he faced off against Paul for the first time since the conference final scuffle, everything seemed cordial. Maybe Bev's apology was actually genuine, and like Paul, he wanted to move on as well. <laughs> Come on, this is Pat Bev we're talking about. While making an appearance on JJ Reddick's Old Man in the Three podcast in March 22, Beverly explained he had smoke for Paul since he was a young buck in college. I got invited to a LeBron James camp, you know, the big Nike LeBron James camp when he was in college. Chris Paul was there. I, did, I killed them, destroyed them. And then I see him in the NBA. So of course the energy is gonna roll over to the NBA. Okay, if that type of energy is something that Pat's been holding on to since college, CP3 hasn't really shown that same type of animosity. Later in that interview, Pat showed his admiration for Paul and praised him for changing the game. But even his applause for the point god came right after calling him, and I quote, a dirty little motherfucker. To finish things off, Pat said CP3 knowingly games the system and his shove in the conference finals was something he needed to get off his chest. It's a true shit sandwich of a compliment. While Pat kept fanning the flames, there weren't any opportunities to watch their beef play out on the court that season. Minnesota and Phoenix were on different levels and another playoff clash wasn't likely. The T-Wolves barely snuck into the playoffs, winning the play-in tournament which Pat Bev treated like a championship victory. In pursuit of an actual title, CP3 had a dreadful performance in the Game 7 semifinals loss that gave Beverly the perfect ammo to pounce. The following morning, Pat Bev woke up bright and early, threw on his crispiest polo shirt, and went on a media tour dragging Paul. He started off on ESPN's Get Up, saying he doesn't need serious preparation the night before playing Chris Paul compared to other guards in the league. I'm going to Stake 44 over there in Phoenix. I'm mm. going to have me a nice little wine, probably sweat it out, and uh, the pregame shoot around and get ready for Chris Paul. Steph Curry, I'm going, I'm going to bed at 8 o'clock. Mom, don't call me. My girl, don't call me. I don't, I'm, I'm locked in right now. Later in the same segment, he tries CP3's defense, comparing him to an inanimate object. 
CP can't guard nobody, man. Everybody in the NBA know that. Guard, everybody can't know guard that. anybody. What we call them? Cone. You know what you do with cones? Like when in the summertime, you got a cone. You make a move. What does the cone do? Stay still. Exactly. Yeah. He's a cone. Check the time. This is all before 10 a.m. Eastern. Half the country hadn't wiped the morning crust from their eyes, and Pat Bev was already unleashing hell. Just to clear up any confusion, Beverly doubled down in his appearance on first take, saying no one in the league is afraid of Paul's Phoenix Suns. Well, many current players disagree with Bev, but I quickly have to commend his grade A hating skills. When Pat Bev earned second team all defensive honors in 2014, Chris Paul beat him out for the first team spot. In 2017, Bev finally received that prestigious first team spot, but so did CP3. He had been crowned to the all defensive team twice alongside Paul and still found time to flame him. That's elite trolling. But besides completely slandering Paul's talent, one point that Beverly kept coming back to revolved around Paul's treatment throughout the league. Beverly felt like thanks to the positions Paul's held, CP3 could get away with certain calls that others weren't fortunate enough to benefit from. Pat Bev questioning Paul's credibility isn't a unique critique and one that's followed Paul throughout his various beefs, but Beverly's ferocity of never letting up, no matter the circumstances, is unmatched. Take this December 22 matchup between the Lakers and Suns, for example. During the third quarter, while Paul guarded Beverly out by the three-point line, Pat Bev drove strong to the hole and knocked down a shot plus the foul. After the bucket, Bev taunted CP3, calling him too small. All is fair in the world of beef, but at the time, LA trailed Phoenix by 26 points. 26. It didn't matter if his team was getting rocked. When Bev finally got his opportunity to talk a little trash, he had to do it. After the game, reporters questioned Paul about the taunt, and he continued his refusal to call out Beverly by name. Paul brushed it off and took a stab at Bev's originality, but his irritation was clear. Dropping the line, just play basketball, man, is essentially the polite way of saying cut out all the other shit. At every turn, when given an opportunity to fire back at Pat Bev, Paul took the high road and decided to let his game do the talking. Although, CP3's game sometimes involved foul play. During a March 2023 matchup between the Suns and Chicago Bulls, as CP3 tried to get separation from Beverly, he reached around and clearly tried to punch Pat Bev in the groin. Just watches Beverly immediately covers himself down low after taking a punch to the stomach. I guess old habits don't always die. Both of these dudes are in their mid to late 30s now, but no matter who they play for or the amount of time that's passed, their beef remains piping hot. While speaking on his podcast, Bev said he would never turn down his intensity when guarding Paul. Whether it be indoors or outside, Bev is prepared to stick Paul the length of the floor and that mentality wouldn't change until CP3 either retired or his own ankles shatter. Bev's had a number of spats with players, but he fully admitted to having special hate for Paul. Pat Bev is 1000% authentic to himself, so there's no reason to believe that this beef wouldn't continue unless he literally couldn't walk. Chris Paul maybe hasn't thrown the same type of direct shade at Beverly, but despite saying he's matured, his actions on the court don't back that up. If Paul ever wants to get rid of Bev, he'll either have to seal his mouth shut or wish for a tragic ankle injury because two irritants stuck in their own ways is a recipe for everlasting beef. Yo, thanks for watching. It's clear these two dudes are incredibly annoying in their own way, so of course they have other beeps. Feel free to check those out, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more heat while you're at it. Peace.